Y'all ain't from no projects like I am. All you think about is getting under the quilt covers, crack the window just a little bit, let the air come in. But I appreciate you all coming back tonight. God has something great for all of us. But um, Detroit may be a little different, but in Florida where I live, I'm from New York, both places have a problem and that is they can't drive. I'm on my preaching time now and y'all don't hear me, but they can't drive. <clears throat> and then it's terrible when you are trying to get somewhere by a certain time and the way the others are driving is to tell you we don't care. And from that, I'm prophesying, y'all don't know it. From that, we get road rage. This I won't talk at all. That's when you're screaming loud and they can't hear you. Because you're in a different car. That's when you think about rushing up on them, tapping them with your car. The only folk that actually do it is them that got a beat up car. <laughs> but one of my members had to go to school because he had road rage. He wanted to get somewhere, not fast, but on time. And something translated in his mind that no one cared about where he was going, like the person sitting near you now. Went to class, he had to do eight hours, split the hours, and they came up with one question for him. I hope somebody catching, and that is, do you ever use your horn? He said, excuse me? They said, do you ever use your horn? He said, no. He said, well, the automobiles were constructed. Can I get one debt-free person to talk to me? <laughs> to have something on it that when it's blown it translate to who's blocking you get out the way I'm talking you don't have to tell them the horn does that I got help over the end to me it's useless talking to a devil that gets in your way when the Lord has given you a mouth I don't hear nobody and and some of you come to church, but you never blow your horn. I wanted to. And then you get upset, uh, you get upset about all of us that's going around you. You get church road rage. Jealous of who's dancing and screaming and shouting. They loud, there they go again. We in the HOV lane. Y'all ain't talk, some of us. I, I got help there just like they do on your highway to allow folk carrying more than one person sometime you get that special lane that lane for talkers is you can't be in that lane by yourself and tonight some of you are about to blow your horn because you're going to be late if you don't then some of you going to blow it loud enough because you've got other people in your lives that need a miracle as well. A lot of folk with good salaries, jobs, and doing well, they don't scream anymore. I announced this morning very humbly because it can change in any moment that I'm debt free, but I still praise them like I'm broke. I still praise them like... I put Kool-Aid in the ice cup or ice tray and stick it up in the freezer. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Everybody is one silent moment away from starting over. Hallelujah. So at the count of three, we're going to give you the opportunity for 30 seconds to jump up and blow your horn. 
Let me tell this story also, being that I'm methodically and intentionally preaching this year. That's why I've turned down 52 appointments, right? I just ain't going no more because certain people are bringing you because they on life support. But we're here because God is supporting lives. Now, a police vehicle and what we call an ambulance, they must abide by the same rules as we do unless they're carrying something important. I was on the road. Somebody's blessing me. I think the name that I remember this morning just came back. Joanne Brown just hit me now because I thought I forgot, but the Holy Ghost just brought it back. I got something sensitive to tell you. I don't know why. I'll be right with you. We are parked right now. I was driving my car in Florida where they don't know how to drive. And I didn't. He lived in Florida. And I did not know all the rules. That if a cop car's on the side of the road handling something that you're supposed to go and sway out the way. And I drove too close to stay in my lane. A car left there and pulled me over for not understanding you don't get close to something that's being attended to. Uh oh, it's And some of y'all are too folk too close to people that ain't going nowhere. Yep, some of you looking down around like you don't understand what I'm talking about. Because you've been so long against screamers, jumpers, yellers, but a revival is not for dead people. A revival are for those that refuse to stay dead and they've made up in their mind that if I get up from this situation, the Lord will hear from me for the rest of my life. The cop car pulled me over. I'm a few feet from the other car. He's talking to me about the rules. As soon as we're out talking, he says, move on. We are giving you a warning. Y'all know what that means. I'm not going to give you the penalty that I could. I'm in a good mood. You don't know no better. But move quickly. And I said, yes, sir. Then he got in his car and sped past me. So when we got to the light, I looked at him and I rolled down my window because I'm crazy. I said, why you, why you let me go? Then you get behind me and speed past me. He said, it is my rules. It's in my rule book, this for a screamer, that when there is another vehicle carrying an emergency that's above me, I must get out of the way for it. This big old ambulance was zooming down the street and needed the whole street. Yelling. And it stopped them from giving me what I should have received. Sometimes your sound stops the enemy from doing to one of your neighbors. See, some of you are saying, praise is not just noise. I heard somebody up here. Sister Brown, wave at me. There's an inheritance, then we're going to praise God, coming in your direction. This inheritance is spiritual, but it's going to turn into money. Now, you can have the mask on, but you have to praise them loud through that mask, or this prophecy will be taken back. I tell people, when we prophesy, if you don't know how it works, then don't judge it. When we prophesy and we're right, say this, that, and the other, and we may be on point, and it does not happen, but what we said was correct, it's not always that the person given is a false prophet. It could be that the recipient is a false recipient. It's easy to blame us for you not getting what he promised you because you didn't know what to do or how to respond to what he said. If they didn't shout at Jericho, I'll leave that alone too. They marched, but there was something about a sound. 
God said, tell her I need her mouth for more than prayer. I need her mouth because the inheritance, there it goes, that I've left for her is not in the name Brown, it's in the name Boyd. Hold on now. Uh oh. See, y'all don't care, do you? She's right now being a certified vehicle, basically telling the devil, get out of my path. I cannot, I know she can hear me, I cannot speak to the dead, neither can the dead speak to me. But the God of the living and the dead speaks to me. He says, tell her, I've been holding this because I made a promise to a man named Cecil. He said, and the reason why he's telling you this, he's been trying to lift your burdens for a long time. And tonight he lifts all of that sadness. Some of you are very desensitized since COVID. You're about to get an abundance of power and money. See, that's the real Joanne. The other one was the one that had to fight through why, Lord? Why now, Lord? He was a good man, Lord. So at the count of three, we're going to praise him. Where is the young lady who got that money this morning? Are you here? Someone uh, cashed at me $50, told me give it to you. Hurry. I don't want to steal your money. They were watching and gave it to me. You're more than welcome. Oh, Lord, she done took the mask off. So at the count of three, I think this is important. Did the person with that name I wrote on the paper come? Which one? I don't know her, but come out. How are you? I'm going to put you <clears throat> in the spiritual HOV lane with Miss Brown. In June of this year, June the 3rd, you were supposed to go into relapse from something that should have killed you. The Lord said, I have decided because, almost like her, a word from someone else to let her live. People are going to get healed when you go into your prayer life from cancer, in particularly breast cancer. They're going to be healed from high blood, diabetes. God says he's, he's changing your lane of ministry. So at the count of, hallelujah. So at the count of three, then we'll praise them together. There was a lady that shook my hand where I went to eat. I don't remember. I can't remember how she looked. She had on the mink coat. Are you here tonight? You shook my hand. You were the only one somewhere where I was eating. If you're not here, then that's fine. I can move forward. I can't remember no names. Do you remember who it was? She walked in. Excuse me. 
D curatin. All right, I would not have known, but she shook my hand. I wanted to give her a uh, word from the Lord, but instead I'm going to pause that and let them praise God. And we're going to pray for the next time I'm here, someone named Roberson. Last name is Roberson. She's a dark-skinned woman. Um, she's standing before me now. She is, oh, the camera. She's watching. <laughs> I forgot all about the camera. I'll be. Uh, now I need to say another name. Whoever this is, this person is connected to you, but the name sounds funny. It looks like it should say Campbell, but it's spelled with a CH. Like Shambly, Shambo. It's real different. This person, um, somebody up here knows them. Where is Ki Kiera? Kiera. Um, there's a, there's a woman's name, last name is C-H-A-M-B-L, like E-E, -E, like Shambly, like Shambly. Um, there's, you need to reach out to her because the Lord says, you are going to be key. Now I'm, now, now I'm losing my mind that you're going to be key. And I'm just going to say it because God said, because you gave her son a chance, there will be a son in your belly. Whoever played in some kind of Broadway play, it's a small light-skinned boy who sang in a play somewhere like in this church. Who just wanted to meet the wizard? The wiz. What? Talk to me. It's a little light-skinned boy. I don't know him. You can help prophesy to him. Because you gave him or whoever some type of opportunity, he's going to become a huge success. And, and what's your last name? Uh, why don't you lay hands and call the child what you want it to be? Are y'all jealous or happy because we coming through? Now, bro Kelly, I don't know if she told you or not. I don't know if she took me serious because that's like my niece. I was walking out of church this morning. She was standing right there. She told you. The Lord said, touch Kiera and tell her I'm fixing it. I didn't know what he was talking about. But the Lord says. And the legacy continues. Uh oh, it's getting real. All right, watch God. Y'all sound like your horn don't work. At the count of three. Oh. At the count of three, especially the men in here get loud because we got two going to court that could possibly go to jail. You stay quiet, you going. I won't say what row you in. Don't look at nobody else. You know I'm talking to you. Ain't no need to look in no other direction. At the count of three. And to all of you that don't want to do it, you are not going to hell you're not going to be broke. You're just going to continue down the road you on. Are you pastoring? You are? 
Where's the building? Inkster, is it your building? Y'all own it? If I told you that God is showing me a piece of property with your name on it, would you believe me? Would you want it? But you already have one. Y'all own it. You'd rather have this other piece of property? Oh, so you want God to pay off the other one too, another building. I'm going to give you this lane too. You're not a runner, but you run in the day. When you do, God says, I'm going to also give you two pieces of property next to the thing so that you can... Uh oh. Who did you put in Flint, Michigan? When he was running, Flint, Michigan dropped in me. And the Lord says, if he hears you and does right, I want to give y'all three blocks of property in Flint. I'm going to say this here to happen later. Flynn is about to become an economic capital. God said where there was mess, there'll be oil. Now, I don't know what he means by this. Flint's about to strike oil. This is a story about a man named Jed. I ain't stunting you serious people. Poor mountaineer could barely keep his family fed. But then one day he was shooting for some food. Up from the ground. Y'all not helping me prophesy. I came oil that is black gold. Next thing you know, there goes the prophecy. Old Jed. So they packed up the truck. Hills, that is. Swimming pools. Let him know, somebody text him, that if he prays God right where he is, loud with us. God is going to crack open properties. Miracles. Inheritances, children, <laughs> at the count of three, you got to blow your horn like you need a miracle. You will clap and scream, one, two, three, do it now.
30 more seconds and we're going to the word of the Lord. And when the music stops, praise continues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, make it authentic. Here come a hashianda namahai. That's organic. You have the Lord's attention. Don't let him go till he bless you. Mmm. To God be the glory for the things that he's done and for the things that he's presently doing. The gospel of Jesus according to Luke. Get your Bibles, you can be seated. Luke chapter 5. We will cut and paste. Victories in the air. I said victory is in the air.
Your neighbor's mouth is setting you up for complete victory. Don't let nobody make you feel crazy. Go on and give him what he deserves. You survived the past last three years of your life. Somebody you knew ain't here no more. And God left you here for a reason. First reason is I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually, drummer, I love a worshiping musician, shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Miracles are in the room. They don't know it. God's doing things quickly. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Because this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And delivered him from all his fears. You're being interviewed for a miracle. And your posture is guaranteeing that miracle. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This morning I taught from familiar passage, enveloped Reverend Doctor around Peter walking on water. I ain't stopping that. That's called the HOV lane. Time for us to stop looking at praisers like they're crazy and screamers like they've lost their mind. That's your grandmama and great grandmama's posture. She be in the front. Hey, hey, hey. That's the posture of church. Tonight, I feel like one of those when I think of the goodness of Jesus moments. And all that he's done for me. Go ahead and praise him. My very soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for saving me. Your prayers, Bishop, are being answered. You said what you wanted. It's already visible. You that are watching by social media, we hope you can feel the experience because the Bible said, and he sent his word and his word healed them. Hallelujah. This particular sermon, let me give a backdrop because I'm not going to be able to preach it. Bishop can hoop on it at the end when he sent us home. Let me see if 10 people are with me locked in. I'm about to preach until you never come up empty handed. Some of you didn't blow your horn. Never will you come up empty handed. Last year held a lot back. But the miracle of last year was you lived through it. I'm talking to talk. This year you're going to get paid for it. Last year you lived through it. God let them talk to me. This year you're going to get paid for what you had to go through. Last year. I had to look up. What giving God glory actually means. 
We could talk about it in the Greek. We could communicate about it in the Hebrew. But let me make it user friendly. For the same two people that I want you to stay activated for 30 minutes and let the rest be quiet. Giving God glory is when you make God look good in your bad situation. That's when people look at you and can't tell what you're going through because your posture is stronger than your problem. Look at somebody and tell them your posture has to be stronger than your problem. I'm not preaching on jealousy tonight, but I am giving you a salad. And on this note, only 30 people praise, then you can be seated. If people are going to be jealous of you, have more than what they think you have. See, you didn't even talk. What did he say? They're jealous because of what they think you already have. Because your life is giving God glory for what you don't have. This year is going to compensate you for all the give up moments you had last year. I'm through, finished, tired, but you kept on. I want you to say these three words to your neighbor because I'm going to use a friendly kind of preacher unless I'm in a class teaching, but we're in a revival. You're going to talk to that neighbor or you shouldn't sat there. When you tell them these three words, if they don't get excited, don't talk to them for three minutes straight. Then go back to being their friend. Just tell your neighbor, paid in full. Let's see their reaction. Paid in. It's been spoken in this house, debt free in 23. So you can't possess it if you don't confess it. Want to read a story, give three points about it. Can't wait till Monday. I want to preach. I'm going to give you something to be jealous about. I was studying jealousy, his grace, and the Lord said, put it on pause. He said, we're going to preach it. You wrote it. I gave you that understanding. But I need you to hook a caboose on to this morning. Because some of them want it, but they're not prepared. They're dancing over what they don't believe is right around the corner. If you knew, I'm, need, I'm talking to two, that you were going to get a new house for real in 30 days, why you didn't go buy furniture? See, you're waiting on God to bring it to pass. Then you want to do what's next when you should by faith be doing what's necessary because I know God cannot lie. Tell two or three people, be their friend. God cannot lie. Musicians, help me preach by talking to men. Yeah, I've heard the old cliche, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. But I want to be honest with three of you, he never comes when you want him. Because he don't abide by time. What you thought you couldn't took last year, you made it. What you thought you couldn't make it through 10 years ago, you laughing at what you used to cry over. Why? He knows what's best. So in Luke chapter 5, there's a bunch of professionals closing up shop. I'm preaching already. Because they didn't catch nothing. 
They're tired and fatigued from the season of nothing. <laughs> Let me say it for my two members. It could be from Shabbat. I'm tired of nothing. Come on, God's not mad. You got to be humble. No, no, the days of praising him for nothing is coming to an end. He never had a scripture that said praise me for nothing. You already have enough folk telling you you ain't nothing. You always have a few jealous family members saying you ain't gonna never be nothing. But between now and March, I said the first quarter of the year, God's gonna overload you with stuff that he promised you over the years. But before I leave, you must be ready. When I get married, I got to lose 20 pounds for my gown. Start losing now. Whatever you know is coming, you should be preparing for it. These are not just... And it'll be verses 1 through 11 of chapter 5. I told y'all I'm cutting and pacing, which means I'm already preaching and you won't talk to me. I want to be Baptist, which means baby, way back in my day when I was young, my parents would preach. And sometimes my pastor would say, read it when you get home. The second thing I need to say is these are not just fishermen. These are professionals. Catching nothing. What happens when you're doing everything right and it keeps turning out wrong? Oh, I wish I had more than two people. What happens when you're struggling and God tells you to bless somebody when you can barely be a blessing to yourself? I'm coming down your street in about 10 minutes. Stay with me. Why would God give you a kind heart and put people to bless on your heart and not give you everything you need to be that blessing? Now, Bishop, hopefully I can say one or two things you've never said because you've preached the whole Bible over your lifetime. But every now and then, I like when you pull me in the office and be like, boy, let me tell you something. You said something tonight. I have a problem because people don't believe it. The reason why these professionals caught nothing for those who will talk to me is they were working hard without Jesus. And when you don't have him, oh, I wish I had you have to work extremely hard. They rode hard this morning because he wasn't there. Tonight they're working hard because he has not arrived. If I say this and one mother on the front two prayer warriors jump, I'll be good. I told you this year, put his name in the atmosphere all year. And God said, every time you call me, I'm going to make work a little lighter. See, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Y'all don't want to preach about Jesus no more. Every tongue shall confess. Blind eyes will open, the lame shall walk, and the deaf, the dead shall be raised. But we must put his name back in the atmosphere. And if you call on Jesus, y'all don't remember, he will answer prayer he's on the main line look at these young people I don't preach to Z's cause y'all don't talk unless we sing it but he on the main line tell him
the Bible says, just start scrolling. Verse 1, 2, 3, just scroll it slow on your own. They can read. The people pressed upon him. What did they come for? Not a miracle to hear the word of God. Once the church goes back to loving uh oh, the word of God. I'm going to quote some old songs and some people will scream, in the word of God. See somebody, I've got a hiding place. Throw me overboard. I've got a hiding place. He stood by the lake Genesaret. Verse 2, move quickly. It says in verse 2, if you don't have it, I'll run them a book. It says in verse 2, it says, And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them, which meant they were closing up shop. Look at somebody and tell them, don't shut down tonight. Come on, help me cut. point at them, talk to them. Tell them, I know you're ready to give up because you're tired of catching nothing, but today don't you dare shut down sitting this close to me. Tell them we both getting something out of this. All oh, both of us. The fishermen were going out of them and they were washing their nets. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, stay in this scripture, and prayed that he would thrust a little out the land. Now, I said I'm not going to preach on jealousy, but I'll give you salad. For the first 10 people to jump, you will get it. People are going to be jealous of you because he chose your boat to get on. Now, I'm going to say something that only you can defrock me. You can take back my Kojic license. You can tell me don't preach for six months and I will obey. But I need to say this while I'm in the power of the Holy Spirit. And ten folks scream, you didn't run for this, it ran to you. There were many other ships, but Jesus chose to step on board. Uh, oh, y'all don't hear. It's not who you are. It's who he chooses. And some folk are upset because you were God's choice. If you're not talking, walk the plank. Hardy ha. Walk the plank. Get off my boat. The Bible specifically says there were other empty boats, but he chose Simon. And then he gives Simon an order. I got four verses left, but you got to scream. The order you need this year to get more than you ever got last year, ask me what it is. You must learn when Jesus gets you where he wants you, who to pull away from. See, some of you talking loud in your head. Mm, mm, mm. No, talk out your mouth. Because your neighbor needs to know they're standing there. Let me give it to you and see whether you catch it spiritually. He tells him, thrust a little from the land. This is what he means for the loud screamers who will get rich overnight. He says, stop playing in shallow water. Ain't no real fish coming to the shore. Oh, y'all, and some of y'all can't get blessed because you're hanging out with shallow people who don't understand what you're trying to catch. I didn't go through all of this hell to praise God over a hundred dollars. I'm grateful for whatever he gives me, but if you want me to be honest, I need what matches my struggle. See how quiet y'all are? I can't deal with y'all anymore. You standing up, but you won't speak up. That's why you're catching nothing. The Lord's on your boat and you won't even hold the conversation. I need from God what makes the hell I went through make sense. 
I want to be able to say, if I knew it was going to be like this, I'd have kept my big mouth shut. Lord God, forgive me for everything I said. I need to feel that. God's going to make you regret every time you complain. I'm sorry. He thrust out. A little from the land sat down and began to teach. But he's teaching while he's telling Simon, pull away. Now you're going to find out if I'm with you and I'm teaching them and they don't follow you and I. They don't like the word because if they saw that I'm teaching and I'm moving, why are they still where they are? Uh Oh, at home, I had to train my cane cost on my dog. She's stubborn. She really stubborn, but she's teaching me how to have patience. Right. And they told me how to teach her to sit. I made her sit. Then they said, now you got to make her sit and come I said huh said you got to give orders he said tell her come and she came but walked right by me so she actually never came I I called her by her name I didn't come here baby she came quick and walked by me so she never obeyed the command then the trainer who should have been training the dog but he was actually training me Oh, y'all are missing me because for you to train your dog, you need a trainer to train you. So my trainer stood in front of my dog that lives with me, who I train, who I feed, who I picked up behind that he don't lead. But he had something in his hand that I didn't have in mind when giving orders. He had a treat. Y'all Oh, y'all mighty quiet. So when he said, come, the dog didn't listen to him. The dog understood there's something in his hand. Y'all know, and some of y'all can't obey God because you don't know when he calls you, there's also something he has. I got to the place where I didn't have to have no more treats. The dog became disciplined. And enjoyed, y'all going to miss it, coming to me with nothing in my hand. And when people would see that, for those who would scream, she was giving me glory. They said, your dog ain't going to move at all. I said, nope, not for a car. She'll get hit. She's right now where I told her to be. But they never knew how many treats I had to give. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to have to leave this area, not because of the front row, but every row behind it. i got to find me a stronger area. And I want to say this to ten folk who would scream. God says, some of you now made him look good because you're obeying him with nothing. Right now, it's like nothing. And this is called giving God glory. Back to the text, verse 3 and 4. Now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, I'm ready, launch out. I know y'all heard this before. Into the deep. Let down your nets for a drought, not drought. The difference in drought and drought, y'all ain't talking, is one means a big catch is coming. The other one means Don't expect anything to happen. Now, only for English grammar speaking people who will praise God just on intelligence loud. Catch this. For God to change your season, all he has to do is change one letter. Some of you can't even see your season is already spelled out and all God God has to do is take the O out and put an A in. The issue is you think it's the same. Because you couldn't spell it from the beginning. He says to Simon, 
Go back to four. You're about to get what you couldn't get. But you won't know how to keep it if you shut down. Let me say it for young people who are talking. You were shutting down when it was coming. It was coming today. If you would have washed your nets, I wish I had ink, with a solution, you could not have put it back in the water until the next day. Which means you would have contaminated your season. And because some of you didn't shut down, here I go, and refuse to shut up, you have not contaminated your season. What you have done is you've told your season, I'm ready for whatever you're about to do. Six minutes of teaching because I have to get to this one point. Verse five. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, I've toiled all the night. Have taken nothing. Nevertheless, I hope three people catch it. Because you preach so good. You teach well. What's making him do it is not the presence of Jesus. It's the words that Jesus taught. Oh yeah. Now if I say this, I'm leaving this area. I love y'all, but I'll come here and I'll try you. If you catch this and scream, you got it. You cannot sit under good teaching and not produce. Boy, y'all don't like, and you can't tell me he can't preach and teach. So if you're not producing, it's because you're giving up on yourself. I give up. This is not anything you don't know, Bishop, but I might as well go ahead and say it for two folk who will be multi-millionaires who will yell from the back and the front. You made it, but most people didn't expect it. And when you did, they act like they knew it because now they want to be in your season, but they weren't in your boat. Y'all ain't talking. The issue is... Some of you, this is also, y'all ain't gonna like it, a year to be legitimately selfish. Now, some of y'all too holy for me. Nah, don't be selfish. Let me put an addendum, a clause, a disclaimer, something on there that will make it stronger for two who will yell here. I like the energy I feel. And that's this. If you were with me and stuck with me while I had nothing, you have access to my everything. But if I know you never expected me to make it at all, let's just kiss and say goodbye. Hey, watch it, watch it, Bishop, watch it. The way I know in church that you expect me to succeed for screamers is you're praising God loud for me, not you. So even though you don't have nothing, while I'm crying, you're saying, get it, brother, get it, sister, give God glory. And I am mentally recording your participation in my situation. Oh, no, I like when folk walk up to me. I'm from the hood. That make me preach better. I don't. Nevertheless, at thy word, it reads in English, because you taught so well, even the balakosianda, even though I'm a professional, I'm questioning you because, number one, I see who talk, you don't have a boat. You using mine. Number two, you ain't got a net. Y'all don't hear me. You using mine. Number three, y'all ain't talking. You ain't a fisherman. And trying to tell me how to fish. Jesus' rebuttal for three folk who scream is, I made the water. 
I created the fish. Y'all ain't tongue. Everything you trying to catch, I already mastered. You're the professional of the sea, but I'm the master. I don't just control what's in it. This morning, I walked on it. Y'all better stop questioning wisdom because wisdom don't have to have what you need. I had a Mercedes. I don't have one anymore, but I rode in a beautiful one all day tonight. Last night, this your man. It's beautiful. It was massaging me without me telling it and stuff. And I waited a long time to ask him, why is your seats doing whatever it wants to do? And he said, if I swerve, uh, 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 curve a certain way or swerve, it moves on that side to keep you in the seat which meant his car was situated to make sure you stayed where you belong. Look at jealous folk. What kind of car is that? You jealous. We ain't talking to you. I had a car. It was a Mercedes, but I, I traded it in years ago, but I kept her long enough because every time a yellow light comes on, if you love your car, you don't feel like your car's working. See, women ain't talking because all they do is drive it. Light come on. Hey, hey honey. <laughs> I looked. My yellow light came on. Real men cut the car off because they don't want to have to take it in. And they wait a little to see if it's going to go off on its own. Y'all not helping me preach. I'm about to leave. No, I can't leave y'all. Y'all still up. I'm coming over there. Then it went from yellow to red. When I picked up the manual, the book said yellow means you're okay. You can continue to drive, but please make an appointment with service. Red said you shouldn't be driving. See, y'all ain't talking. Have you ever hung out with people and felt a yellow light? See, it's quiet. And you knew I shouldn't gave them my number. I should have never texted them. I should have never went in to eat. Then you tried to show them love and the light turned red. The light turned red. I took it to Mercedes because it was theirs. Mercedes just to see it cost me hundreds of dollars just to see it. Then they analyzed it on a diagnostic machine and it cost me some more money. Then they told me what was wrong and gave me the option to take it home with the lights on or leave it there and pay the price. Y'all not talking? told them keep it they told me what the parts cost parts weren't that bad but the labor oh y'all if I say this and y'all don't scream you missed it some of you gonna get rich because last year was a year of labor the cost of labor is more than the parts I feel glory. I took the car. They fixed it. Then they said they reset it. Everything is working, Dr. Hall. 30 days later, light. Took it back in the second time. They claim it was something else because you can't prove it wasn't. Y'all too quiet. And I had to pay the money because I needed the transportation. It happened again. See, some of you act like you have not had repetitive issues, but it's okay. 
And if you don't scream, I'm going to stop preaching. And you act like you ain't never made you break down a little bit and have to pull over. Or made you say, I can't keep functioning with my lights on. My church is in the hood hood. In the middle of nowhere. A man came to me. He is legally blind. Was driving my Mercedes down 17th street. Hey, Reverend. And I said, hey, y'all had good church today. Thank you. Nice car. I didn't like that part. Because he called it from the outside. But only I knew what was really going on. Uh-uh. Let me see your car. And it's in the hood. So I got ready to drive and tell him another day. But the Spirit of the Lord prompted me to pull my car into his driveway. <clears throat> into a driveway whose house is on stilts. Yeah, where I live, all of the houses was on stilts. Now they're on ground, but they were on stilts. So I drove <clears throat> into his driveway. He said, that's a nice S, whatever it is. Sound like something wrong with it. And he had blind. Now, right now, the narrative has shifted. Because I'm wondering how this blind man. Oh, yeah. I can't come here still. I'm wondering. I'm wondering how this blind man. No, I'm wondering, yep, how this blind man can tell something's wrong with my vehicle. He says, um, you bought this down at the Mercedes place? He said, I said, yes, sir. How many times have you been in the shop? Two or three times? I said, mm-hmm. He said, you spend a lot of money. I said, sure did. He said, why don't you go to church and let me have your car for an hour? I said, mm-mm. <laughs> Reason one, y'all going to miss the story I'm closing, is he's not certified. But he's qualified. Uh-oh, some, uh some of y'all won't take help unless it's from somebody you like. Versus somebody who has what you need. The Holy Ghost, who I know very well, settled within me and gave me a calmness and said, leave your car. I'm in church preaching, thinking about whether my car's still there. Y'all laughing, but you wouldn't left yours. I don't know this man. We got crack houses and meth houses on my block. This man could sell my car. Can't sue him because I didn't have a contract. Can't take him to court because he never said he was certified. This is a risk. I came out of my church and ran down the block. He said, Reverend, start your car. She sounded better than she ever sounded. She was quiet. Lights off. He said, now, Reverend, I'm going to guarantee you, you ain't going to never have this problem again. I said, excuse me? Oh, see? I said, never? He said, never. I said, why? And he revealed to me, for those who would scream, you took it up to Mercedes, and they don't have a master mechanic because I quit. He said, I fix these with my eyes closed. Y'all ain't talking. And well, <laughs> he said, you took your car to a bunch of professionals. But you didn't know there was a master on your block. Now, the problem why you can't get a miracle then one more five-minute conversation for screamers is y'all keep treating Jesus like a professional.
Let me quote the words to the song. Folk are standing up in the back, ain't talking. Why be seen and not heard? Let me talk to three people. I was sinking deep in sin. Listen to the lyrics. Far from the peaceful show. I was very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise. You that are talking, we getting you something new. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. Then from the waters, but y'all missed the words, but the master of the sea. I want to repent to God with three of you who want to be wealthy by March and say, I'm sorry for treating you like a professional. I got to leave my car with you, my marriage with you, my business with you, my plans with you, my dreams with you, my creativity with you, and I'll be back to pick it up before the first quarter. Y'all are not, you've got to give it, I gave it over to the Lord. And he worked it out. Didn't he, didn't he? Last but not least, the problem, Bishop, and you've preached all of this, but maybe this part I can get some help, then y'all can ease into it. The problem is, we preached this, and when we were younger, gave it fancy topics, like I caught my biggest catch, can't hold it, got it with a hole in my net. Yep. Yep. Too much, I couldn't keep it all, nothing got away. But the truth is, if you come from seminary, like some of us do, School of Divinity, even though we hold back on the material, 10 of you better scream on this and all run and jump because it's you. Peter would have gotten way more fish than what he caught if he would have let down all the nets. Hold on, put it on the screen. Verse 5, put it on the screen. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will, y'all ain't, let down the what? But go to verse 4, let's go backwards. Launch out into the deep. And let down your nets. But nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. But the order from the master was nets. Y'all better talk, I'm leaving. Which meant some of you would have gotten way more. If you obey the instructions of the Lord. Now when I say this, 10 of you jump music ease in somewhere, but I need to hear your mouth. Some of you are entering the season of multiples. Go to F-Shop. God is about to put an S in your life. Multiple checks, one job. You're not going to work two and three jobs for one petty check. God's going to give you a check that resembles you have three, four, five jobs. One person in your life that can love you for the other 10 that hurt you and left you for dead.
Just grab somebody by the hand and look at them like you want to preach and ask them, are you ready for multiples? Tell them you already lived with nothing. But tell them God is about to give you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. You better grab somebody's hand tonight and look at them like you trust God and tell them God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. Now grab it and shake their hands and get a little nosy and say, oh, neighbor, you ready for what God has for you he's about to give you the desires of your heart but don't wait until the battle's over don't wait until the bills are paid don't wait until your tears are dry but shout shout now said shout shout now because trouble don't last always clap your hands and say yes Grab somebody by the hand that believes God and say, oh, neighbor, tell him, I, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Now tell your neighbor, it's all right now. I said, shake him like a salt shaker and tell your neighbor, it's all right. your sickness gone all of your bills paid because I heard the voice of Jesus say come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest look at a neighbor and say rest is in your life I'm going to close because the restaurant closing. But listen to me. You're my Shanda Mansukia. Uh-oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I'm going to say four words and give all of you just 30 seconds to praise him by leaping, screaming, jumping, running. But praise is a motion and praise is a sound. When I say these four words, if you don't praise them, don't worry about it. And the law said the four words are, it's already done.
Bishop, we're closing, and then they're going to scream praises to God. Look at me. Don't let nobody get your attention now. Rebuke them. If they would have let down all the nets, they wouldn't be millionaires. They would be multi. If you buy a property, it's better to buy a multi-level property. Instead of letting someone rent one house, you can put 10 on one property. See, you're not thinking like a business people, so let me leave y'all alone. You need God to reveal to you for the loudest screamer, whoever it is, that God's going to bless you until people buy into you. You are the fish that saved Pittsburgh. Tate, listen to me. We're batalakupara. That lady's nickname is Shanty. The Lord just spoke to me again. That's her name. Shanty, she's got a daughter whose name is T-A-I-R-I-G-I or something like that, like Taraji or Taraji or whatever that name is. That's a daughter. She has one son, one daughter, baby boy and a girl. Her grandmama or somebody is born on August 21st. Now I'm done with this, but listen. And listen to me clear. For God to do that, that means he's blessing you for generations. That what he didn't give to your parents and grandparents, he's about to give to you. That's called multiples. Look at me, look at me. Bishop, one net. Too many fish. Couldn't hold what he put out there. So it broke. The breaking of it is an act of disobedience. Because he disobeyed, it broke. Some of you got to talk to me. I'm closing. You broke because you know you disobey. Please take your responsibility. You broke because you helped the wrong people. You helped disobedient children. You didn't pay your tithe. You didn't put God first. You broke. So what do you like? So what Jesus does is what he's going to do for all of us with big mouths. He says, the only way that I'm still going to bless you is I have to teach you that I'm not a professional. I am the master. So I'm going to command the fish that got away to jump in the boat. Uh Oh, y'all. He's told nothing. You cannot get away even though they're disobedient because it's about me right now, not them. I need them to believe I'm not on their level. I'm the master. I know a lot of folks speak in fake tongues, but every now and then when it hits me, I barely speak in private. I mean public, but I speak in private throughout the day because I don't need to be seen. But when it hits me in public, God's working miracles. Here we go. Close. The fish are on the command of God. The only reason why the fish jump in Peter's boat, somebody scream on this, is because of who's on it. When Jesus is highlighted in your life, Everything that would normally avoid you is about to pay you a lot of attention. Uh-oh, hell. And I'll say this for women who will scream, you know when your future's ready, when your past wants you back. The mere fact that something from years ago has just texted or dialed your number should let you know you in another season. I see a man looking funny. He must have came here for his ex. He looking like, man, he done blew me up now. That's done. 
I'm sorry, homie. Still shoot your shot. Look at me. Don't look to the left or right. The fish jump on the boat. Let me tell you how many nets they actually needed. You can scream for me. You can clap for me. They needed about 20 nets. I'm going to prove it and only multi-millionaires will scream who know it's a fact. All the fish were in the net and then too many on the boat to where Jesus told Peter, you better call some partners. Because you're about to drown from too much. Y'all ain't talking. You, hold on. Oh, nobody caught what I said. I'm not just giving you enough for you. I'm closing right here. I'm not just setting you up for you. He said, Peter, you better call your partners because if not, what I'm giving you is going to take you under. Peter says, beckons for his partners. And they fill both boats to where, read it, the both boats are sinking. They're sinking this time not from having too little. Now let me talk to three folk and y'all will scream. I'd rather go under from too much. Because at least I can throw some over or give some away. But I refuse to keep testifying I'm going under from nothing. I'm not letting nothing take me down. We're closing. I said I'm allowing nothing to take me down. You women crying over men that have nothing. We're giving people attention that shake our faith that at the end of the day, the only job they have is to get on your nerve because they have nothing. They have mastered getting on your nerve. Bishop, on this, stomp your foot if it makes sense. Ten of you screaming, we're done and you can stand, but you must stand with understanding. Maybe they didn't read the next verses. I won't preach them. They get back to the shore. They catch enough fish that Peter gets on his knees before Jesus and says, I can't enjoy this. I'm a sinner. He says, I know this has nothing to do with my profession. I cannot enjoy it till I serve you. And then Jesus goes to his house and heals his mother-in-law of a fever. His wife, if he's got a mother-in-law, he's got a wife. But because the wife is not a praiser, her name is not mentioned. Oh, yeah. If he's healing his mother-in-law, then the daughter should be the one screaming. All right, I'm going to leave. Any woman, you want to preach a woman's conference, any woman in the Bible who had an anointed man like you have that don't support his vision, the Bible gives them no name. Their name is Lot's wife. Job's wife. Noah's wife said nothing. No, thank you for taking me to the top. Thank you for saving our family. So we don't know her name either. At least Jezebel got a name. Now let me come back and leave this alone. Atavasi prokos kitabahaya. Everyone standing there can't accept the mothers or those who want to sit. The rest of you, especially you Z's and millennials, get your lazy self up. You love the attention, but you don't like the ascension. You use his name for your fame, but not for his own glory. The Lord says, all I want from them, oh, Bishop, I didn't close it. This is what I close with. And somebody back here screaming, you'll be blessed. Peter caught enough fish that day to quit work. He dropped his net and said, I'll follow you. Y'all ain't talking. All the bills paid in advance. Y'all ain't talking. Because he gave Jesus control of his situation. 
I teach this and I believe it. Work is what we do until our seasons begin. A salary is what man can afford to pay you. A season is what God has always had for you. Some of you are about to be empowered enough to quit. Because you quit working don't mean you quit working. I just quit working for you. Peter no longer works to catch fish. He's so caught up with Jesus that when he dies, he's crucified just like him. And he's so humble, he says, tip me upside down. He's so critical that he jumps in water in John 21, treading water, catches nothing. And Jesus said, cast thy net on the right side of the boat. When he hears that it's Jesus, he's so excited, he leaves what he catches and swims towards Jesus. He leaves what he thought he wanted. Gets to Jesus for the loudest scream. And when he gets there, what he wanted was already done. The Bible said there were fish on the coal and bread. So why are you trying to catch what the Lord has already done? In one minute of obedient praise, no music. I want the musicians to catch this praise too. Because tomorrow God's going to strategically, oh, there he goes. He said, tell half of them, I wish it was all of us, I'm going to strategically send them a master. Somebody who can get you from where you are, right where you need to be, without the process. I'm going to send you some people that are so empowered that all they have to do is make one phone call. And you're there. And your net becomes nets. High five my shoulder if this makes sense. Steve Harvey makes all his money with one mouth. He don't do nothing but talk. Family feud. Steve Harvey show. Being a comedian. Everything. One mouth. Picture God using your one gift that's needed in five different areas of life. On this, you can preach it. I'm going to preach it. I believe you're going to be a multimillionaire and let her scream as loud as she want to. But capture this and then yell. You ready? Because he uses his mouth, he's going to always make money. Ask me why. Because the only part of the human anatomy that don't get tired is the tongue. Feet get tired, hands, legs, joints, but that tongue? You need something that you can say and get paid. Y'all ain't tough, that's the bottom line. You need God to take the labor out of the work. I preach, you invite me, this is a job, but this is also ministry, this is also friendship. But people think this is how I make my living. I don't. I preach with this mouth, I get calls from schools to come, and I teach with this mouth. And then I go to other ministries that just want me to come do leadership conferences, eight a year and 10 women's conferences, and they don't want no yelling and no prophesying. All we got to do is teach with this mouth. And what's crazy is all the money comes from one source. Jesus being advertised from my mouth. Stop talking about who you are who you know whose number you have in your phone let God make your name the greatest name in your family I ask God to make me the wealthiest hall I'm two halls away there's only two more halls that say they have more I've not seen it but I believe them but by March see I'm calling mine you ain't I'm going to catch whoever those two halls are. At the count of my shiandai. Do you have that lady's number or her contact? 
can you just text her and ask her who is Victor? I have no idea what that is, but ask her who is Victor? At the count of three, you're going to praise God while you're doing it. Hear what I'm saying. When praises go up, the prices come down. I'm going to say it again. They think I'm playing. They really think I'm playing because we're so used to people that call themselves something that they're not. But when God speaks to me, the first believer is me. The house I live in costs a lot of money. I didn't pay it. Because when praises went up, the price came down. Them Asians told me they not pulling not one dollar off. The devil is a liar. They left me enough to build a pool. Y'all ain't trying to say I'm going to build a pool. I asked for a ridiculous price. Not expecting to get it. But I got it. God's about to give you something that you really asked for. That you really don't believe he's going to do. God said tell him I heard them. I'll say what I said this morning for the last time. Change your company and God will change your currency. Are your two churches in Michigan near each other? They are. How long would it take? Yeah, I mean in, in Flint, Michigan. Are they? Yeah. Talking about the ones in Flint, are they near each other? How long it take to drive to them? 15 minutes. If I told you that one of them properties are about to make you a lot of money, would you believe me? I know you don't want to entertain it, but a company is going to call you about one of your properties. Y'all remember I told them, get the camera. Take it. If not, they're going to build all around you and you're never going to sell it again. God said, I had to tell you that because you're such a businessman, you'll hold out for the bigger deal. He said, tell him once he does that, I'm going to give him favor with who bought it. And they're going to offer him properties that are not on listings. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have a private little sheet with properties that's coming available in a lot of places. I don't want to say where because somebody going to beat you to it. So I have to prophesy with wisdom. You're about to be multi, multi. And I'm upset because three people in here don't like that I told you this. But we don't prophesy out of friendship. We prophesy out of assignment. What God has for you, it is for you. Uh, Jackie, you're about to own two properties. God said, tell I've been waiting over 38 years to give her this harvest. One of these properties, I don't understand... It's coming from some people you've never met. But God said, tell her they owe her this. God said he's going back 80 years to get it. I'm going to say this and hopefully you will understand it and you will praise God. You can have these properties wherever you desire. But here's what the Lord told me. I want to give her added years on her life, so tell her I have just located her a beach property in Florida. Okay, everybody's quiet. There's a Y'all real quiet to be praising. God said, you asked for the state, but you didn't ask for the estate, and this. I'm way over my time. Y'all got me in trouble. At the count of three, you're going to start clapping, leaping, screaming. Look at me. Even if you don't feel it, there's some men on this side. I won't say because you're not bad men. You came and now that I'm ending, you're like, I know God told me he had a word for me. That means you got to come back. 
woman with the issue of blood went to the doctor a whole lot of time. You don't come in and get to the front of the line. There's other people that's been praising God since last year, the year before last. One of you don't need nothing from God except for God to make whoever your hater is let you pass to the church. Now let me move further. That simple. I'm done. See? But if I'd have said that to you on camera, your haters would have seen you and they would have fought you even greater. Count of three. Hey, Sinclair. We've been talking for two days. Do you believe anything I've told you? For real? I don't want you to lie to me because lawyers lie. Thank you. No, don't ha ha. That's a part of the job. No, I'm just saying. Me and my adjutant was in the car with you tonight. We drove with you. Don't say anything. We passed a building. The building had attorney's names at the top. He asked you, who were they? You translated to him who they were and etc. And then you said, I'll keep my field of practice, whatever that is. The Lord said, tell him. He also said that they became great because they had money and they did a lot of TV commercials. You remember that? You sure? Let me tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I don't want to be caught perjuring. If I told you that this little one minute and 36 second commercial that you would have done is about to get the attention of two rich white Jewish people, would you believe me? All right, listen. If I told you, and I hope somebody's screen, that one of them is on the building. That they're about to fully resign. Would you believe me? All right, Mr. Clean, I'm going to have you run across the pulpit when we praise. Yeah. As you do, God is going to put your name in four corners of this city they're going to see it on one big building they're going to see it in three small buildings you will also hire partners one has not a license at all but they are the bridge to your multi hundreds of millions one person I can't say the rest I'll tell you in the car I'll tell you bishop because this is church but I'll tell you in the car at the count of three, when y'all go to jump and scream and act like you hit the lottery, act like you don't have to go to work tomorrow. Act like you just graduated with your master's or your PhD. You got 30 seconds. Do it right now and do it like you. Man, come on. Hey, hey, Richard, run with him. Don't let him get it. Don't you ever let people get millions by themselves. All right, on tomorrow night, we'll do the rest. Hold the hands of that debt-free person right now. Play something on the piano softly. No one would touch him. Are you going to be here Monday? Good. Can I hold it till Monday? Good. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. I feel. Hallelujah. Are you married? You're going to be here tomorrow? You sure? You don't have them strange work, work hours? You all right? And how old are you? Did you hear when I said, if you know something coming, get ready for it early? Start getting ready. And God said, tell you. 
This one is the right one. Y'all not talking. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. God said, no more regrets, no more holding on to what this person did. Bishop, can you stand where you were this morning? I'm sorry, because you're the leader. I hate to do this. Every person in this church, and I have never pushed for an offering. Bishop made my load easy because he loves me. He says, I'm going to always take care of you no matter what. I knew that, but I'm not here for that. He's a fair man. But it's unfair that you get the blessings and he gets the responsibility. I don't hear anybody talking to me. Never depend on your leader to do everything. Your job is to make his load, help me, lighter. My children can only use my keys, my car, and my house when they make my living lighter. The ones that disobey... They got to like leave at a certain time. I want my car back and I want it full of gas. I want to teach them that if you can pay for a car rental, treat my car as well as you treated that rental. But to my one or two children that treats my stuff like it's mine, they have access to it forever because they make my load 